Hello everybody, welcome to the Netbird channel. In this one, we're gonna be checking out a tool right here called Zero Byte. It is rather new, it's gotten quite a bit of traction in the last couple days, so I had to check it out. And at least in my initial impressions, it is awesome. Essentially, it is a backup platform that you can hook up with a variety of services, such as NFS, SMB, WebDev, and RClone for the actual volume. Volumes are basically the location of the data that you want to be backed up. And then for repositories, which is where the data is going to be backed up to, it supports S3, Cloudflare, and a bunch more, including a bunch of different cloud providers and SFTP. Do note, this is rather new. They are currently in a rather early version. There will be major changes from version to version. So do note that going forward. Until there is an actual stable release, it's probably not a good idea to use this as your only backup solution but it's definitely a good one to have on in the tool belt. Supporting features such as automated backups, flexible scheduling, end-to-end -end encryption, and multi protocol, which we went into. And it's all spun up with a simple Docker Compose right here. And I'll quickly show you my current setup. So you can see I was playing around quite a bit, testing everything and everything works for the most part, at least on my end. So if I CD into the directory that I have all this set up, you can see I just have that single Compose. And if I go into nano to the compose YAML, this is my current setup. So we have the image, we have the container name, restart and let's stop privileged true. This shouldn't really be necessary anymore. Again, they're fixing things all the time, but I did have to have that enabled for a little bit to get SMB shares to work. This is going to be running on the port 4096. And we have access to the fuse device. We have our time zone, which is going to be used for actually scheduling the backups. And then we have our volumes. So we have the local time the default zero byte directory. And then the machine I have this running on actually has two uh, four terabyte hard drives. So I have a little mirrored Z pool in the backup directory on the root file system. And I have that pointing to a local directory that the container can actually see. So that's basically the entire setup process. All you do with Docker installed on your system, you create that compose file, point it to the proper directories, spin it up, and then you could go ahead and sign on in. Additionally, a little note on the volumes. They have, they have pretty decent documentation, so you could have a simplified setup if you're not gonna be using remote mounts. They have some information on adding volumes, how all that works, so I do recommend you reference their official documentation, especially if you want to start using RClone for cloud storage. All the instructions are here if that's something that you're gonna to wanna to go ahead and set up. Now, for a quick tour of the actual platform before we integrate Netbird into it and set up kind of a remote backup location, I'm going to show you what I got going on here. So under volumes, again, this is the data that I want to be backed up. I've mounted two SMB shares for my primary NAS. Again, this is running on a different machine. So you can see both of those are online. If I wanted to create a new volume like before, I just hit that, give it a name, set up how I want to connect to this. So if I did um, SMB, for example, just all the typical credentials and variables you'd expect for a share like that, you could test the connection. If I go back and open up one already existing, for example, and see data here. I have all my configuration stuff, so I could go ahead and change any of this if I need to, if I change the IP address or anything, test connection there. Right here under storage usage, you can see the amount of capacity that I have available, at least in this share. The total used, free space, so that is nice. And then we have health check, so if I run a health check, you can see this mounted SMB share is currently healthy. Very nice. You could also view files, which is pretty cool. So if I go right here to files, this is just a NC data folder, essentially. If you've ever used or set up Nextcloud, you're probably familiar with this. But if I go admin, files, I can see a lot of the stuff actually in this share right here. Now, repositories are, again, where things are actually going to get backed up to. Right now, the only thing I have is local. Again, this is on a different machine. So for like the uh, three, two, one backup methodology, this is my number two, a copy of the data on site on a different machine. So if I open this up, you can see this is just local. I have it in that local. If I at my compose real quick, that local directory there that the Docker container can actually see. We have compression mode. If I go down, we have some of the configuration and text with the actual path that I associated with this. So it's gonna be in a zero byte repository directory. And then for the backups, of course, I've actually went ahead and tested some of this. So I have two different things. One is for home movies and the other is for NC admin, which is my admin account for the next cloud share. So if I opened up this home movies right here, you could see I have two snapshots already backed up. We could see the schedule I have set, which we'll go into when we create a new backup. We have some data for when we backed up last. And then right here, of course, we have these snapshots. So if I click on one of these snapshots, 
it will load the files and I could see the actual directory schemes and all that directly through here. And restoring data is pretty easy. So if I went to these home movies, for example, actually, let's go ahead and click on restore. And we can restore right to the original location. Or if we go custom location here, let's say I want to put this somewhere else. So let's just go local. So in there, it will create kind of a var directory and actually restore the file. So we actually need to select a file. I could select everything, but just for the um, for the sake of time, I'll pick one that's kind of smaller. We have the overwrite mode. There are some advanced options if you want to get into that, but I'm just gonna click restore one item, which the restore is complete. So now if I CD into that backup directory here, you can see we have that var folder. So if I LS all the way into that directory, we can see that one file I went ahead and restored. So with the kind of demo and functionality out of the way, what we're gonna do is create a backup offsite using this locally. And we're gonna be using kind of the built-in REST functionality and integrate it with Netbird or use Netbird as the peer-to-peer -peer encrypted connection for actually backing up. If you don't know about REST, it's pretty cool. It is a high performance HTTP server that allows for file transfer, synchronization, and a whole bunch of functionality, but we're just gonna be using it for like the most basic use cases. So on my offsite machine, let's go ahead and set up a little a uh, REST server. And to do that, we're gonna grab the latest release. We want Linux AMD 64, this one right here. So let's copy that link and download it to our server. So if I just do a wgit, pop that on in there, there we go. And now let's go ahead and extract it. So if I do a tar xzf and then point it to the REST server tar that we just downloaded, hit enter. And then we can see it right there. If I CD in there, you could see the binary REST server. And then I'm gonna move it to my user local bin, type in my password, there we go. Now I'm just gonna check, see if it works right away or if we need to um, reset something. So REST server, pseudo REST server, making it executable might be of benefit. So now it seems to be working. So let's make our actual data location. So I'm gonna do make directory, and we're just gonna call this uh, backups. That will be the location that we use. If you want to see the commands for REST server, if I just hit this, you could see all of the different options that we have here. I'm gonna stop that for now, and we're gonna create a actual systemd service for this. So if I go uh, sudo nano, we are going to place this into Etsy systemd system REST server and drop this and I'll go ahead and paste the thing down below so you get all the commands and everything that I'm doing here. So for the path, we're gonna switch this up to that backup directory and we'll go ahead and add the no auth. Might be a good idea to do that if you're actually gonna use this in production, but that looks good for me. And then change the user to Brandon or whatever your user happens to be. And actually for path, this probably is not gonna work. So we will do home Brandon, just like that. So let's output, control X, and then run a Damien reload and systemctl reset, just like that. So now if we just grab the status of that, we look like we're good to go. We can see the command there, it's running, beautiful. So now we're gonna connect all this up with Netbird. No ports or anything like that need to be exposed. Again, I still, you should probably still add authentication, but I'm just trying to see how well this works. So on this offsite, I already have Netbird up and running. If I run the Netbird status, you can see we're good to go. So I do need to throw Netbird here on this local machine. So to do that, we'll head over to the Netbird setup keys. We'll create a new one. This is my zero byte server. And here we'll add it to a group just called zero byte. So I get real specific with the actual permissions. And then from there, let's go ahead and create our setup key. Let's install Netbird and grab this curl command so we can install Netbird directly onto this machine and type in my password. And then while it runs that, let's grab our Netbird up command here. There we go, drop this on in, hit enter. And just like that, we are connected. So what we're gonna want to do is create a quick policy so that can actually work. So if we go over to policies, let's add a policy. And in this case, we are going to want our zero byte machine or that group, which there's only one peer in it, to have access to our VPS. I have one peer in there that is uh, this server right here. That's the peer. So we're gonna go ahead and add that. 
we'll do a policy. So this will be on TCP and that port we selected with our REST server, which is going to be 8,000. So now if I continue, we're gonna skip posture checks for this great feature for added security, do recommend check it out, but we're gonna continue and this is going to be zero byte to VPS. Add that policy. So now what we should be able to do is go under peers and let's go to this Ubuntu offsite and I'm just gonna grab the Netbird DNS name right here. Go over to zero byte and under repositories, we're going to create a repository. We're gonna select the backend of a REST server going to give it a name real quick. We'll just call it something like um, Ubuntu offsite. And for our rest URL, it's going to be HTTP at that netbird IP with the port 8000, just like that. I believe we could leave this empty. We're just going to do it in the root. I could be wrong. Let's type in my uh, username here. I don't have a password and we should just be able to create that repository. So just give it a sec to do that. And we can see the repository is successfully created and it is healthy. So it's doing that completely offsite using that Netbird DNS name. Absolutely beautiful. So let's go ahead and back something up to it, shall we? Let's go to backups. Let's create a new backup job. And for the volume, let's back up something from Nextcloud Data. This is a offsite machine, so I don't have a lot of storage. We could call this something like docs off-site. So for the backup repository, we're going to use Ubuntu off-site. We can select our frequency here. So let's say I want this to be done every single day at 1230 PM. And then here, let's go ahead and select a super important folder somewhere. Let's go files, uh, documents, and let's back up my forms directory. I have a lot of stuff in there. So here we have the additional parameters, excluded uh, patterns, a lot of different stuff. You could get real specific, especially with the retention policy here. So let's keep the last 10 snapshots. Let's do five dailies. Let's do three weeklies and then two monthlies. So that's how much of these snapshots it's gonna retain. If I go ahead and click on create, we now have our docs off site. So it's gonna back up from my local Nextcloud data directory to that Ubuntu offsite server. So since I don't wanna wait for the backup to start, I'm just gonna click this backup now button. Give that a click. We can see the backup is in progress. It, whoa, it's done. It was, it was just a bunch of PDF files. And if I scroll down, we can see the snapshot right there. We can see the data. So files, documents, forms, and a bunch of different kind of generic forms that I have. So now those are all backed up off site. So if I go over here to my Ubuntu off site server, I can examine this. So within my backup directory, we can see I have backup config data index, bunch of different things for zero byte. If I CD into the data, we're, we're, we're not gonna see too much cause it's encrypted. But what I could do is restore something. So if I go click restore right here and I wanted to grab just a specific file from this server. So if for some reason I needed an aircraft <laughs> bill of sale, I could restore that one item either to the original location or a custom location. So if I click change right here, we can back this up to maybe my local directory. And then if I restore the one item, it shouldn't take too long at all. You can see it's done. And then head over to my local server. I can then find it by going to the var lib zero byte volumes. And I believe the newer one is the Z93 admin files, documents, forms. There it is. And that is zero byte, a really cool, relatively new. If I click report an issue here, go to the code free and open source application that you can use for backups. Again, down below, I'm going to link to a write-up for the commands that I used. If you want to set this up with rest server, I'll throw some tidbits in there about setting up proper authentication. So if you want to back up this way, you can, or you could just do local backups, however you want to do it. All that links to this repo and anything else that I mentioned in this video will be down below. And with all that, I do hope you have a beautiful day and good bye.